Hey guys, so I wanted to do a video about the traits in Hunt Showdown. Now I did one of these a long time ago, I did a tier list, however this is old by now and it needs to be updated. And I was drawing this to attention because I got a comment saying needs updating and you're right, it does need updating. So here we go, I'm going to grab the traits in Hunt and I'm going to put them on a tier list here. Please know that when I say something is in D tier, it doesn't mean it's absolutely trash and you should never take it, it's just the uses for all the times that you would pick it are pretty low compared to S tier where it means that you should absolutely pick it all the time given a certain scenario. Now that does have some caveats like if you're using decoys should you always take decoy resupply? Not always but you know probably but also not always whereas like I'm going to touch on things like if you're dual wielding should you always take ambidextrous? Absolutely, fucking lootly because you're reloading faster but anyway Let's get to it. So, uh, Beast Face. Beast Face is a trait that allows you to have a lower detection radius from animals in the world, not including hellhounds. So, like, dogs in cages, chickens in coops, crows on the ground, things like that. It just gives you a lower detection radius. It means if you want to be a little bit more stealthy, it allows them to not ping you from so far away and detect you and make noise. Oh, horses as well, which is great. We like it. It's a good trait. I'm going to put it right there in B tier. It's very good. Assailant is a trait that is strange because it allows... It's strange in a way, but, and I'll get to why. It is a trait that allows you to stab things suddenly with a throwing knife, which is great because normally you can't stab with a throwing knife with the melee animation, and it changes the animation to allow you to stab, which means you can actually take a throwing knife and assailant. You don't need to take an actual knife. It also allows your throwing axe heavy attack to do more damage, which is great. And it also changes the animation for your throwing nice heavy attack. Instead of just uh, pulling it up and back, it puts the knife, or the, the blade I should say, in front of your, almost in front of your neck. So it changes the animation to allow you to have the weapon placed in such a way that it can, it can even block shots. So if you get shot towards that area, it's going to count as an arm shot, not a neck or uh, upper torso, which is great. So it's actually a lot better than you think it is. It's also pretty cheap. I think it's like two trade points, maybe one. I'm actually going to put it in A tier because of the versatility. It allows you to stab with your throwing knife. That's a lot of versatility. Adrenaline, straight there in D tier. Don't want it. And that's because even though its effect, even though it's, sorry, its price is cheap at one point, it just gives you stamina back when you're critically injured. That's it. It has some very, very, very niche applications. Maybe for a brand, brand, brand new player who doesn't know what they're doing and is dying to PvE, like grunts and armors. Yeah, getting to critical health, this can help you. Uh, keep stabbing, sure. But its uses are limited. Ambidextrous, absolutely S tier. If you are someone who is tanking dual pistols, being able to reload them faster is wonderful. Because reloading is something that we all do in Hunt, and there's no... There's not really many traits that allow you to actually reload quicker. There's traits that allow you to reload more effectively, as in Bullet Grubber. Uh, and there's traits that allow you to essentially shoot faster, like I and I and whatnot. But reloading faster is a pretty rare ability. So if you're taking dual pistols, having the ability to reload those bad boys quicker, wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely S tier. If you're dual wielding, you take this. You take this. Every day of the week, you take it. Uh, Blade Seer. Also putting it in... I'm actually going to put it in C. Blade Seer is a trait. It used to be Bolt Seer. I think it's like Blade Seer. Maybe it is Bolt Seer now. It's something Seer. It's a trait that allows you to see in Dark Sight the location of your crossbow bolts, hand crossbow bolts, throwing knives, and throwing axes. So you're not going to lose them as easily in the world. It's pretty good. You're pretty good for that ability. You can find them. Uh, having the, the main problem of the crossbow is that you can lose your bolts pretty easily. This allows you to find them, which means you don't need to resupply ammo as frequently as you normally would from the special ammo boxes. Fantastic. Love that. Great. It's a good trait. Bloodless. Now, Bloodless is a trait... It's much like Mithridatus. Bloodless is a trait that depends on the meta. Bloodless is a trait that makes it so that any bleed cannot go above a light bleed. You cannot get medium bled or intensely bled. So frag grenades, um, dum dum rounds, things like that, bear traps. It's just going to count as a light bleed, which is really, really, really good. But it really depends on the meta because whilst light bleed, uh, things greater than light bleed do exist in the world, it's mainly going to be applied to you by other players. 
And it really depends on what they're using. However, that being said, at current, as I write this video and record this video, it is in 2024, Bleed Meta on the Centennial is pretty good. It's pretty common. Also, Dolch is how, uh, now has uh, Dum Dum Ammo. So Bleed is very good. So Bloodless is actually an S tier right now. Absolutely. It's absolutely an S tier currently. Outside of that, I'd probably put it in B or A, depending. But at the moment, it's something you take. If you have the points for it, take it. Because everyone at current is using bleeding ammo. They're using Dum Dum or they're using Shredder on the Nitro. Like stuff. It's very, very common currently. Like I said, outside of that, I'd probably put it in A tier. In fact, I'm going to try and make this video have a bit more longevity in terms of things. So I'm actually going to leave Bloods in A tier, but high A tier. It's currently an A tier. It's a very good trait. You should take it if you have the points. But not always. It really depends on the meta. But I would still take it. Bolt throw, absolutely S tier. Again, it's a trait that allows you to reload faster. It allows you to reload your crossbow and hand crossbow faster. Cutting down the time of reloader. Now, I've said this multiple times. It might be controversial. But I think bolt thrower should also be affected on the bomb lance. As in, you sh this bolt thrower should allow you to reload your bomb lance faster. As it's still a bolt, right? You're reloading the bomb lance harpoon. You're reloading whatever it's the frags, or you're reloading the ball bearing. Now, prior to ball bearing being in the game, that wouldn't have been such a controversial choice. But now that ball bearing exists and it's basically a silent Romero, a bit scarier. But I still think bolt throw is fantastic. I still think it should absolutely affect the bomb lance, and I think it's a trait that belongs in S tier because, again, it's a trait that allows you to reload faster. You take it. If you're using a crossbow, hand crossbow, you take this trait every day of the week. Uh, Bullet Grubber. Used to be absolutely top, 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 top tier because of the ammo uh, saving that allowed you to do. However, then Crytek added the ability to partially reload your weapon without losing a bullet on some guns. There's some you still can't prevent it on, but the majority now you can. So you can reload your Labelle and your Mosin and your Terminus, etc. all without losing a round. So Bomblance lost some of its appeal. However, they did reduce the cost of it. I think it's only four points now. I think it used to be six. So bomb, uh, Bullet Grubber, great trait. Absolutely fantastic. The animations are slick. Conserving your ammo is good. I do think that it is uh, absolutely something you should take on like the Marathon or if you're running a Bornheim or even a Dolch. I'm going to put it in... The cost does actually come into play. Four is pretty cheap. I'm going to put it in high... No, I'm going to put it in mid A. It's going to be an A tier. It's a great trait. It doesn't cost much. It allows you to conserve ammo. And that's fantastic. All, all ticks across the board. All good things. We like it. Uh, next up is Bulwark. <laughs> and I have a friend of mine <laughs> that is going to have thoughts on this trait. So I was taking some water. He's going to have thoughts on this trait. I'm going to tell you where it is. I'm going to tell you where I think it is, and I'm going to tell you why you should absolutely always buy it. Well, at least potentially always buy it. I'm going to say right now, it's A tier. Top A tier. Because it impacts the damage that you take from explosives. Right? Explosive crossbow. Things like that. It also allows you, for two trade points, if you get stuck by a bomb lance harpoon, to not die. That is phenomenal. However, the bomb lance is not used all the time. Neither is the explosive crossbow. That's why it's not an S tier. If the bomb lance and explosive crossbow were used all the time, Bulwark, absolutely S tier, but it's still two points. It's very good. It's very high A tier. I'm going to put it actually right at the top of A tier. It's almost S, right? You don't want to, you're not taking it every time, but for two points, you pretty much always should. It's really, really good. You can't get stuck by bomb lance and die. It also affects your ability to die further away from things like, you know, dynamite and explosions. It's really good. It's great. We love it. My friend probably thinks it's in D and thinks it's horrible. And I, I, he, we're not going to go into that. It's a whole can of worms. And next up is Conduit. Conduit now is, uh, this might sur surprise some people. Conduit. Right up here in here. Conduit used to be absolutely garbage. Absolute garbage. Conduit is now very good. Conduit gives you, now, uh, Conduit gives you stamina when anyone, if you have it and you're playing in a team, and your teammate has it, and they get a clue, you also get the stamina. You don't even just get stamina, you get stamina and health. Like, Conduit's really good. Conduit allows you, if you pick up Conduit, you don't need a stam shot. You can just pick up Conduit and just run around the map, save yourself the 
the hunt dollars. Save yourself the consumable slot. Conduit's great. 12 out of 10. Love it. A tier. Very, very good. Great trade. Uh, next up is... Look, again, this is subjective. This is my tier list. Dauntless. Dauntless is, in my opinion, the best trait for its cost in the entire game. Absolutely. Top of S tier. You're going to th see things like Doctor and Necro coming up and, and whatnot. Dauntless is still better than them, in my opinion, for what it does and for what it allows you to do. Now, Doctor and Necro, again, I say better than them. Doctor and Necro, Doctor is always going to be used because you're pretty much always taking damage, right? You're going to be taking damage more than you are going to be disarming nades. But Doctor is quite expensive, for what it is. But if you were to remove point traits, yeah, Doctor's absolutely at the top of the game. Like, you take it all the time. You always take it. But in the same camp, you should always take Dauntless. I'm serious. The amount of stuff that I have pulled off with Dauntless, the amount of safety that Dauntless gives you, the amount of time someone has cooked a nade, you hear them cooking nade, and I press tab, I check my traits, and suddenly I'm no longer afraid. I actually just rush at them. They throw it at the ground, and I Dauntless it, and then stab them and kill them. Like, Dauntless has gotten me a lot of kills, and I have a lot of a lot of clips of it being absolutely fantastic, allowing you to do things that you just shouldn't otherwise do. Absolutely top tier. One of the best traits in the game, hands down. Dauntless. Just it's it's if you don't know that already, you're sleeping on it. It's really, really good. I'll attach some footage to show it off, I suppose. Uh, death Cheat. It's a burn trait, and if you are able to find it in the world, you pick it up. It's S tier. Absolutely. Top top tier. All burn traits are S tier for a reason, because that's why they're burn traits. You can't find them, because they're all good. They're all great. Uh, death Cheat allows you, if you die, to not lose your hunter. It, <laughs> enough said. Just, it, enough said. You just don't lose, don't lose your hunter. Lose your weapons, but don't lose, don't lose your hunter. Love it. Decoy resupply. C tier. Uh, I was going to maybe put it in D, but some people do use decoys. And if you do use decoys, you should probably use decoy resupply. But also not always, because you don't always want to be reply. You don't always... Uh, actually, they did change decoy resupply, so you get more ba more or all back, actually. So it's very good. In fact, I'm going to put it in B. If you're using decoys, you absolutely take decoy resupply. If you're using decoys. Like I said, if you're not, it's D tier. But if you're using them, much like if you're using ambidextrous, you should take this. Now, the only reason why it's not up on S tier and whatnot and all of those things, like I did with the dualies, if you're using dualies, is because it doesn't allow you to throw decoys faster. It just allows you to replenish them. Whereas Ambidextrous allows you to reload faster, thus allows you to kill people more effectively because you have more bullets in your gun faster than anyone else. It's great. B tier is where I'm putting it. Uh, Determination. Wow, Determination and Greyhound, um, they were a combo that was used since the beginning of Hunt, uh, as in to have more stamina and to sprint for longer periods. And they kind of fell off with... Stamina shots, and then they kind of fell off again with uh, Conduit and how easy it is to get. D it's, it's weird. Determination, I think I used to put it in A tier, and I'm still tempted to put it there, but I personally, and I mean this, I almost never take Determination. Straight up. I almost, me personally, I almost never take it. You might. You might always take it. I think it's high B tier. I think it's a very, very good trait. Absolutely fantastic, but by no means is it mandatory at all. It, it's not even like, yep, you know, I've got three points, I'm taking that. If I've got three points remaining and I haven't already gotten, say, Dauntless and like Bulwark or Dauntless and like Kite Skin or something, or I'm getting it. I'm just going to go take those two traits up rather than Determination. I think Determination might even be four now. It used to be three. I can't remember. Yeah, Determination, very good trait. Absolutely fantastic, but your mileage may vary of what you get out of it. Uh, Doctor, absolutely. I don't. I, if, if there was a separate camp for Doctor and Necro, it'd probably be up here. And also with Dauntless, right? If there was an S plus, I could probably make an S plus right now, but I'm not going to. But it would be Doctor, Necromancer, and Dauntless in the S plus tier. But because there's not, oh, and the burn traits, the burn traits would be up there. But because there's not, and there really doesn't need to be. But because there isn't, Doctor, yeah, Doctor, absolutely. You get double your health back by healing. It doesn't matter. Doctor could be 12 points and I'd still, I'd, I'd still f***ing buy it. Like, honestly, it's that good. Thousand percent. Uh, fanning. Wow, Fanning. Now, Fanning got a price increase recently. I think Fanning's now... What, seven points? Nine points? I think it's seven. I think it's seven now. Maybe seven or eight. It, it's, I can't remember the point cost of it, but it's, it's not cheap. Fanning's a good trait. Fanning allows you, obviously, to fan hell and fan down people. Again, your mileage may vary. And there's also guns that specifically benefit from fanning like any version of a pistol with a swift reload um or really i mean 
any person any person with a swift reload benefits from it greatly greatly but also like any single action just also benefits it's a great trait i'm gonna put it in you know what i'm gonna put an a it used to be s probably no i'm gonna put an a i think it's still an a it might even be just high b but i'm gonna put it in mid a great trait still really good the amount of time people have murdered me with chain pistol fanning is too many times man it's a great trait uh frontiersman oh boy frontiersman is really 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 good it allows you to have or get back sorry it allows you to yeah it allows you to get back oh man i'm blanking now i'm pack no no it's frontiersman you get more tools yeah that's right get back another tool um you get an extra one, not get back. So you get an extra one, like an extra med kit. Frontiersman is just so good. Oh my goodness. Extra med kit charges. Oh, just f sign me up. Uh, high A, maybe low S. Really, really good. Having extra med kit charges is... You can use it for other things too. You can have extra traps. Cool. Extra med kit charges though. Like honestly, that's, that's, that's what you're using it for. It's the extra med kit. Like, yeah, cool. I love extra traps, but I'm really in it for the extra med kit. Just just the extra med kit <laughs> the traps are good anything's good but just having extra tools oh my goodness so good i was getting that in and pack mule confused i get them confused because they're usually often in conjunction anyway really good trait uh pretty much always worth getting expensive but worth it you should get it if you have the ability to get it if because you're always going to be getting shot at uh you're always getting hurt so having the ability to have more charges 12 out of 10 we love that we love frontism gator legs oh man New gator legs. New gator legs. It's so good. So good. So good. Oh, wow. Do you move through like a... Just... You move like a fish through water. You can also crouch walk in water and make no noise, basically. It's fantastic. But not every map has a ton of water. Which is why it's in B tier. Great trait. Up the trait. Very good. But not every map has water. As much water as every other map. So it's kind of situational. It's going to go between Beast Face and Decoy Supply. Very good trait. Absolutely. If you have two points and you find yourself constantly going to push towards compounds that have a lot of water or run through water or you just want to run through it because it's the shortest between two points. Gay Legs is great. Ghoul. Ghoul is a trait. Uh, Ghoul has gone through some changes. Originally, uh, it wasn't as good as what it is. It's now, it's been buffed twice, I think, and now allows you, at any range, if you kill a, I think, oh, I think it might be 25 meters, actually. Maybe now it's any range. I can't remember if it's, uh, it's any range or it's 25 meters. I think it's any range, actually. I think it's any range. If you kill AI outside of a meathead, you get health back. You don't get like 25 health back, but you get some health back. You get like, I think, 10 or 15 health. It's not much, but that amount of health that you get back, I think it's like 10 or 15, that amount of health that you get back is a la it enables you to go over bars. As in, if you are at 50, if you have 150 health and you're down to a 50 brick, not because you've died, but you've lost down to 50 health, you can kill an AI and then start regenerating into the next 50 brick or the 25 brick or whatever. So as a result, Ghoul is really, really good. It enables you to run around the map, kill AI with absolute abandon. You don't have to worry. Uh, the amount of times Ghoul actually has also saved me in gunfights because I am missing health and I can just turn around and blap an AI and get health back. It's just so good. As a result, I'm putting Ghoul actually in A tier. It's a very, very good trait. It has saved me many times and it will save you many times when you start using it. It's really good. Greyhound. Oh boy. Um, again, it's subjective. Purely subjective. It allows you to run fast without getting tired. But currently, Conduit is just meta. Conduit's so good. Conduit is so meta right now. Conduit should probably even be up here. Conduit is so good. So... Ah, I'm going to put Greyhound B. I'm going to put high B with determination, but still B tier. Yeah, still B tier. Very good trait. Allows you to run for longer time, uh, a longer amount of time without having an asthma attack. Great trait. With all the easy ways now to recharge stem, to restore yourself, uh, yeah, at current. At current, no. I will probably have to update this for a third time, but at current, no. Horn skin, absolutely no. Better than adrenaline, absolutely. Uh, lowers the amount of damage you take from blood attacks. Cool. 
Cool. So like AI and uh, maybe if someone's bashing you with a gun. Cool. No one cares. Moving on. Uh, 100 hands. If you're using a bow, you take 100 hands. It gives you less sway. And it enables you to pull the arrow back further for more damage. It annoys me that pulling the arrow back further does not give it more velocity. It should. That's how arrows work. <laughs> but it gives you more damage. As a result, 100 hands, very good. It's, it's, it is, and there's a reason why I'm actually putting it in S tier. Because if you are using a bow, you will take 100 hands. You will take it. Because it straight up allows you to do more damage. It is a trait that lets you do more damage simply by using it. Now, things like Assailant let you do more damage by with the melee weapon and give you a new animation, sure, but it's not your primary method of attack. With the bow, it is. You're taking a bow for a reason. 100 hands. S tier. Get more damage. That's great. Some people would say that's like a... You'd compare this to like a... I suppose like a card game or something, and you'd say, well, that's a win more card. It's something that you, you've already won. You're just winning more. Nah, you're using the bow. You take this if you're using a bow. Absolutely take it. A thousand percent. The only time that you wouldn't take this is if you're doing frag arrows and only frag arrows. It doesn't matter as much then. You're not going for direct hits. But if you're using any other version of arrow that actually, you know, relies on hitting a person, as in regular arrows, poison arrows, you take hundred hands. You just take it. You might even take it with the frag arrows to reduce the sway. I don't know. But yeah, you take hundred hands. It's very good. Eye and eye. Absolutely. Also S tier. Absolutely. If you're using a rifle of some description where you aim down the sights, you take it. A thousand percent. It allows you to fire faster. It is a perk that allows, it is a trait that allows you to fire faster. You take it. You literally always take it. If you can afford it, take it. Get it. Go. Grab it. You can fire quicker. You can re uh, retain the person in your sights without popping out. Absolutely take it. Get it. A thousand percent. It'll change everything. You just grab it. Kite skin used to be one of my ones that used to be an S tier, but now actually, um, I'm actually going to put it in uh, high B. Great, great trade. Take, make sure you take less damage, significantly less damage from falling, but way, way, way back in the day, there used to be no falling damage in Hunt. And then I'm pretty sure Kite skin used to be like 90% falling damage, and now it's like 50 or something. No, not as good as it used to be. B tier. Yeah, it's great. Take less damage from falling. Cool. Love that, but eh. Not as good as it once was. Uh, levering also going to be put in the B tier. Levering allows you to do exactly that. If you have a lever action gun, so any form of the uh, Winfields, the Winfield series, like the Terminus, the just the the, the Winnie C, the big Winfield, Winfield Swift, and also the Mako, and also Centennial, actually, uh, they can all lever action, and that's pretty cool. However, your accuracy may wildly vary depending on the caliber of the weapon. So if it's a medium ammo gun or the Mako, which is a long ammo gun, good luck hitting multiple shots with that. Although I have seen it being done. It's similar to fanning in that it's rather RNG where it's going to go after a certain point. I think after the first bullet, you've really got no control. In fact, I don't think you have control anyway where it's going, really. It's a lever action, but it's kind of a spray and pray. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Your mileage may vary. However, it does work really, really well on, say, the Winfield Swift, the big Winfield Swift with, like, FNJ ammo, allowing you just to lever down a building, stuff like that. It does work. Trying to get a lever action with the maker, yeah, you can do it, but best of luck too. That's why it's in B tier. Good trait. He is fun, and when you get, you know, on by someone with it, you go, ah, oh, man, they levered me down. Like, it, it feels like they didn't deserve it. Pretty much always. Like a fanning. You don't feel like they deserve it. Lightfoot. Lightfoot's being nerfed into oblivion, unfortunately. B tier. Mid B tier. Lightfoot used to be absolutely top tier. It used to be so good, the stuff you could do with that Lightfoot. Not anymore. B tier. No way near as good as it used to be. I mean, we can put it like just below Beast Face. Great trade still, but like, man, <laughs> toothless. Toothless to what it used to be. Magpie. Uh, also B tier. B tier. Really good. Really good. Magpie's good. It's great. If it costs more points to be in C, but it's not. We're going to put it in B tier. It allows you when uh, you pick up bounty and whatnot, you gain one of every re uh, shot. Stamp shot, regen shot, added it. Pretty cool. Short duration. It's, it's probably what we refer to, like I said before, it's a win more thing. You've already got the bounty, you just win more. Great for solos though, really good for solo play, but yeah, B tier. Again, if it costs more, it'd be lower. It's very good. Oh boy, um, Marshalist. Marshalist is an odd one. Uh, it arrived with the addition to, well, the katana to the game. Marshalist is a great trait. 
It's a great trait because it allows your katana to have slightly more range uh, and an arc, a much bigger arc, and also like a really quick draw. And I personally have done some pretty cool stuff with it. If you have a katana, it's, it's one of those perks where I am going to, again, say, if you have the weapon, you should be taking it. Meaning, if you have a katana, you pick it up. Meaning it's going in S tier. Because it's that good. If you are using a katana, you should pick Martialist. Because it allows you to have a greater range at the thing that you're trying to do, which is melee. Much greater range, an incredibly quick draw. Like, so fast, almost instant. I'd say it's under a second draw. Draw time. You can run at someone... They don't know what you're doing. You can swap to your katana that's already put away in its sheath and just press left click and they're dead. There's no warning that you're going to do it. Very good. Very quick. Absolutely excellent. If you're using katana, again, you pick it up. Go out to Nestia. Like if you're using a rifle, you take it. Absolutely. You just take it. You should, you should always take it if you can afford it. Much like if you're using katana, you should always take it if you can afford it. Mithridatist. Mithridatist, also referred to as Mythical Dentist. <laughs> um, boy, that's a hard one. Because much like Bloodless, it depends on the meta. It depends where it is. Unlike Bloodless, though, there's no shot that makes you immune to bleeding. That's why Mithridatist is going in C tier. Uh, because you can just use an antidote and just completely ignore the effects of it. You don't even need the trait. There's no, there's no shot that makes you immune to bleeding. If there was a shot that made you immune to bleeding, Bloodless would be down there too, but... Yeah. Now, poison ammo has seen an increase in its use since the change many, many patches ago to allowing it to do the same amount of damage. But still, it's it's poison ammo, right? You can just antidote shot. And like I've said, like there's magpie. There's things. Are, there's multiple ways to get the ability to be immune to poison now. So yeah, C tier. Good trait. C tier. Necromancer. I don't. This could be a video of itself. In fact, it will be a video of itself. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's, it's S+. Plus. If I had an S+, plus tier. Necro doesn't even need to be S+. Plus. It needs to be in its own separate tier. It's, it's so good. Right? It's so good. Did I just move these down? Oh, I did. It, it's so, it's so wonderful. Delete add a row above? Yeah, I really should add a row above, and it's just going to be the Necro tier. It's just going to be Necromancer. It's its own, it's its own separate tier. And I talked about originally how Doctor and Necro should be in there, but really it's just, it's its own tier. I'm going to change the color. We're going to make it, we're going to make it pink, the Necro. It, it's its own tier, man. It's, it's its own separate tier. And don't get me wrong, Dauntless and uh, Doctor, uh, apps it probably could be up there, but no, Necro just, wow. Um, I won't elaborate too much because there will definitely be a video on it, but it just opens the game up completely. If you are in a duo or a trio, you take this to allow you to revive your team at a distance. If you are a solo, you take it so you can solo revive and stay in the game. So if you get just, you know, on at, you know, 200 meters by a sniper, they can't watch you constantly for all that time because you can just get back up. Yeah, Necro is, is, it's so good. Honestly, this is going to, this is my controversial take. I think it should be baseline. I think everyone should just have the ability to do it period it would change hunt because instead of people thinking oh maybe will they get back up you know that they can you're not going to um and ah about oh maybe they'll get revived maybe they'll get back up maybe it's a solo maybe not you're going to always assume you're going to know you're going to know that everyone can get back up as a result you're going to burn them out and conk on them and the game will change i think it probably could be baseline maybe not should should's the wrong word i think it could be baseline i think that could uh, add some interesting additions to the game Interested to see what happens. Maybe there's an event potentially. Maybe we do it for an event. Maybe, maybe for the next event, Necro is baseline. Everyone just gets it, right? That's what Crytek's been doing with the events. They've been testing traits and testing perks. Next event, make Necro baseline. Everyone just has it. You just have Necro. Everyone's got the ability. It's not even called Necromancer. Everyone can res at a distance. Everyone can self-res. Let's see what happens. I would be very, inter very interested to see some data on that one. Next up, we have Pack Mule. Oh boy. Um, Pack Mule is a really, 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 really solid trait. It allows you to get back more stuff, which is great. Simple as that. You, are, you get back more stuff. You get, when you loot something, you get, more, you get one and then plus one. 
pretty good. Great trait. Getting stuff back. Uh, it allows you to stay in the game longer. You get back two med kits, right? If you've used one, if you've used two med kits when in a fight, and that's all you've used, and then you loot the player that you just killed, you're going to get both your med kits back. It's just so good. You're going to get both your traps back, right? It's wow. It's a convenience. It's a win more. It goes right next to Frontiersman. Frontiersman and Pac-Man all kind of go in the same camp together. Because they're both really, really, really good. But not mandatory. Kind of like a win more. Uh, physician. Wow. Uh, physician increases the speed at which you... It halves the speed, sorry. No, it does increase, I suppose, but it increases at half the speed at which you heal yourself. So the heal no longer takes five seconds. It's two and a half. Which is... Just really good. It's really, really solid to be able to bandage yourself. That's that's a great trait. However, I do think with the advent of regen shots, it's no longer as good as it once was. I think Doctor is amazing because getting a hundred health back per med kit is fantastic. Getting it back quicker though, no longer as mandatory. Between regen shots, between multiple ways to get regen shots, like Magpie, no longer as good. So, what once was definitely S tier next to Doctor because you put them together. Ah, sorry, my cat's biting me. Is now... I'm going to put it A tier. You, sh you don't always need to get Doctor. Sorry, uh, Physician. Don't always. It's still really, really, really good. But people use regen shots, man. People use Vigor. People use... Magpie, right? And even even if you've got Doctor, you generally... If I have to choose between Doctor or Physician, I'm going to take Doctor. I would rather get double the health in the regular amount of time and use one med kit than use two med kits and do it in half the time, right? It's a case of efficiency. So, yeah. High A tier. Used to be S, absolutely. Now high A tier. Uh, Pitcher. Pitcher, Pitcher. Pitcher is... Odd. Because the distance Pitcher gives you, just like horizontally, is not as much as you think it is. But that distance that it does give allows you to throw things that you normally just couldn't do. It allows you to throw into compounds from further away. It allows you to throw over walls that otherwise you couldn't arc over the correct way. Uh, if someone's on top of Fort and I'm on the ground and I've got Pitcher, I can nade you consistently. No, when I say top of fort, I don't mean like the roof. You're not doing that. But I mean like the walls. You can do that. So Pitcher's really, really good. Pitcher is also probably mandatory if you're throwing hive bombs. Not, ne not necessarily, but you can do a lot of good stuff with it. It's going in B tier. Great trait. Really good trait. Love what it does. I wish it costs less. I'm telling you. I wish it costs less. But it's probably good that it doesn't. Uh, next up, we have Poacher. Poacher is really, really good. Poacher allows you to disarm traps silently. Uh, it really depends on the meta, right? I used to pretty much, if I have one trait point, if I've got one trait point left and I've already got Dauntless and I've already got Kite Skin, I'm grabbing Poacher because occasionally you find traps. It's really good for that. Love Poacher. Love it. Great. Wow. Beautiful. Detail. Really good trait. Has a lot of uses. Pretty cool. It really depends how much you see traps, though. Poison Sense. Oh boy. Uh, poison Sense is tricky. Because Poison Sense does allow you to do some cool stuff. And I've got some clips of, of me doing cool stuff with Poison Sense. Poisoning someone, right? Either with a beetle or with Poison Round. And then they go behind a, a building or something and you just wall bang them through it because you can basically see them. You can, basically, you can see them. Poison Sense is really good. But it's all dependent on poison ammo. It's all dependent on the poison person being poisoned. And unfortunately, traits like Mithridatus, things like Antidote Shots, things like Magpie, all exist. Which is why I'm putting Poison Sense right in C tier. Because even if you have a loadout that benefits from it, right, and you're going like, I don't know, a Poison Nagant Pistol and then a Nitro, so then they run behind the, the wall and then you just Nitro them through the wall because you can see where they are and they're poisoned. Yeah, that's cool and all, but... If they had an antidote shot, well, your whole build is just 
it's just f***ing Dan. Is, it's just done. It's just done. So probably C tier. That's where I'm putting it personally. Uh, Quartermaster. Wow. Uh, Quartermaster is so good. It allows so much variety in terms of builds. One of my favorite builds is running a Springfield Compact and any form of big shotgun. Because people hear a Springfield and they push you thinking it's just a regular Springfield. But really it's a Compact and you have a big dick shotgun. Like a Crown or a Rival or something. So Quartermaster is really, really good. It opens up so much variety in terms of what you can and can't do. But it's not something you should always take. It's kind of a win more thing. Right? It's really good. As a result, I'm putting it right up into A tier for what you can and can't do with it. And I'm going to put it right up the top here with Frontiersman, Pack Mule, all that. I'm going to put it below... No, I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it below Frontiersman and above Pack Mule. I think it's really, really good. The things it allows you to do... It's expensive, but it's really cool. Uh, Relentless. I should probably even put a separate thing just for burn traits. Ah, I can't be bothered. The tier list is already getting pretty, pretty big. Uh, Relentless is really good. It allows you to keep a bar. If you die, you just you don't lose the bar. It's 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 at the top. Right? Assume all these burn traits should be up the top. They should just they, they should just be right here. Right? They they need there's no reason why they shouldn't be. They're really, really, really good. Okay? They're they're great. That's why they're burn traits. You you find them in the world. Uh resilience is a great trait. Allows you to get back up, especially if you've got Necro and you self-revive. Oh my goodness, you absolutely take that. As a solo player, it is an S-tier trait because you should take that in conjunction with Necromancer. Now, if Necromancer was baseline, then or baseline for solo players potentially, then yeah, you're grabbing resilience every single game. But it's not. And because it's not, it is a great trait it does a lot, but it also depends how much you die. I personally don't take resilience a lot, despite the fact I die a lot. I almost never buy resilience. Almost never. Such is the faith in my allies. I'm going to put it in very, very high B tier. It's very, very good for what it does. But it's not something, it's not for me, personally, my first choice. You might be wondering, why is something like Assailant there? Well, Assailant changes your animation, so you're not getting stabbed in the head, or not getting shot in the head as easily. It also changes your throwing knife so you can just remove completely the need to bring a knife and just use a throwing knife stab it's pretty cool and it's cheap as chips self skin uh wow self skin's so good the ability to burn slower but it's the same deal man are you burning again if you're a solo you take self skin i feel bad for solos because there's so many traits that you feel like you pretty much have to take you have to take necro you've got to take resilience you've got to take self skin right these are traits you should really be taking as a solo it's like three of your potential trait slots are just already gone I think it's really good. Right? There's no shot to make you immune to burning. Burning and conch farming and whatnot is has been around. It will continue to be around for the life of Hunt, as far as I'm aware. It's a really, really good trait. But it's dependent on something. It's dependent on having the ability to revive. So if you're playing solo and don't have Necro, or you have teammates who just don't want to come res you, or they just can't get to you, it just gives them more time. Is why I'm putting in B tier also. And staying in B tier. Great trait. Really good. Not as low as, say, Mithridatus. But, yeah. Uh, the Scope Smiths. Uh, same deal. It it's, it's goes in S. The reason being, if you're using a scope, you take it. <laughs> staying down scopes is great. You absolutely take it. You just take it. End of story. You take it. It's it. It's, it's, not, it's, not, a, it's not a discussion. You just take the trait. End of story. You grab it. You, that's it. Like, how many times? Uh, uh, and only scope you wouldn't take it on is a single shot scope. But if you're using like a Mosin or like a, like a Mosin sniper or a Centennial sniper, or whatever, you take it. Like, think about it. For those who do use scopes like a Mosin or a Centennial, you know and I know that you buy the weapon in the loadout and then you go to your traits and you pick up scope smith every day of the week. You do it. You don't even think about it. It's just a, it's a it's a, it's an unconscious decision. You just do it because it's the two go together, right? It's like peanut butter and chocolate they just belong together right so serpent oh man serpent i think in my last video i think i put serpent s tier because of what it does serpent allows you to do so much and again again for poor solos man it's basically mandatory <laughs> i feel sorry for solos you know i'm not really i'm not really a solo player but talking about solos god you guys got shafted um <laughs> 
Wow. Uh, Serpent is very, 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 very good. Getting bounties from a distance, the amount of players that it opens up. I think, again, my last video I put it so highly because that was the meta back then. Serpent had only just, I suppose, recently come out, I think. It was that old. And it was a trait that you pretty much always took because the meta was to sit inside and be, you know, a, a camp little head. Now, uh, not the case. Really good trait. Very good trait. Not always taking it. I'm putting it in B. Hi, B. Very good. Very good. Right? S are things that you should pretty much always take if you're in using one of those things, like a katana or like any sort of rifle, right? Or a bow. And then A is things like, well, now that I've taken those things, let me look at one of these suite of perks that might work for me. Right? I would, I'm going to put uh, Assailant again low A. Low A. Because even though I use throwing axes all the time, I don't use Assailant. If I use throwing axes and throwing knives, you bet I'm using the both of them. It depends on what I'm using. Uh, but Serpent, yeah. And then I look down. I'm like, yeah, Serpent's good. We'll grab Serpent. I've got Frontiersman. I've got Pack Mule. I've got Physician. I've got Ghoul. Now what do I like? Yeah, Serpent sounds great, right? You move down. I grab Serpent. Shadow, same deal. S2. Burn trade. It's... I'd argue probably it might even be the best burn trait. I think out of all of them. I think, honestly, in my opinion, Shadow was better than Death Cheat. Because you're always going to have to deal with AI. You're not always going to die. I think Shadow might be the best one. For those who don't know, Shadow makes it so enemies can't see you. They can hit like bosses can, but regular AIs, Grunt, Hives, all that, emulators, dogs even, they can hear you, but they can't see you. Meaning you can just run around past them. You can just run past them. They'll run around, they'll aggro, but they'll never hit you. Wow. And as a result, you can use AI as meat shields. It's just so much you can do. Silent Killer. Oh, wow. That used to be so good. Silent Killer used to be so good. It still is, and I'm someone who uses melee a lot. So it appeals to me. But even someone who uses melee a lot, Silent Killer is, is, is definitely in my... It's, it's in B tier. It's for me, it's in the bees. Like, I'm going to use, I'm going to pick it up, but it's really if I'm either going to a bomb lance or I have a hunch that, like, once I said, I pick, start with the S's, move to the A's, and then I trickle down to the bees and think, what works for me? That's one of them. Steady aim. Steady aim is. Oh, by the way, uh, for Silent Kill, it just makes it so that your melee sound, when you go to charge a melee, a heavy strike, you don't make the noise, the suck in, the inhale. Right, the audible inhale to your opponent, which is quite loud. It means you no longer make that noise, which is good. Very good. Very good trait. But you're really just making, you're really just getting rid of the noise. And also you're getting rid of the, yeah, but things still die, man. Things, things still die. Things still make noise when they die. So yeah, beat here. Uh, steady aim. It allows you to have a, what's that, that? Steady aim. Less sway between weapons uh, that are stockless. It also allows you to stay down your sights on things such as like the uh, carbines. Pretty good. I'm probably going to get some shit here for this one. I'm putting it in C tier. Not just because I don't use that kind of weapons, but because even if you do use those kind of weapons, it's, it's not really mandatory. It's not really mandatory. You don't need it. It helps, sure, but you need it? Probably not. I can't remember how much it costs. That's my problem. I'm blanking on this cost. But even if it was... I would only pick it if it was like maybe one, maybe... I think it might even be two points. But if it's any more than two, it's I, I'm justified in saying that. If it is two points, I'd put it in low B. I can't remember its cost, and I could look it up. But no, I'm doing this just one take. Let's just do it. So I'm going to put it in high C tier. High C tier, nonetheless. Vigilant. Depends on how many people use traps, man. It really depends. Your mileage may vary. But if you have the points remaining and you have nothing else to spend them on, you could do a lot worse than Vigilant because you're using Dark Side a lot. So as a result, it's going to go in B tier. It's going to go above... Uh, I'm actually going to put it right here. I'm going to put it next to the Greyhound Determination Crew. I think it's a great trait. I think it's really, really good. If you've got the points remaining, may as well pick up Vigilant. Why not? Vigor. Wow. Uh, Vigor's really, really, really good. Being able to regen faster with regen shots, it's fantastic. 12 out of 10. Love that trait. But really, it's only good if you're using regen shots. Like I've said, regen shots and the ability to regenerate yourself with gaining access to the regeneration effect. Rather common now. Very good trait. Also kind of cheap for what it is. 
It's throwing in B tier again. Not C tier. It's going in B. There's a lot of B tier traits in Hunt. There's not much that, in my opinion, goes into the C tier. Very good. It's probably going to go around Beast Face area. It's a great trait. It's really good. It's really, really good. But you're not always using regen shots. Now, if you're using someone who always, who always uses regen, like re always uses regen shots, yeah, it's probably going to be A for you. Maybe even S. But for me personally, no. I don't do it. And also, if you always have a regen shot, you don't always have to buy Vigor. You should, absolutely, but still prioritize other things first. Vulture, really, really good, but it goes to C tier. And the only reason why it goes to C tier is because not everyone plays in trios. Yeah, even as a duo, you can run around and be a little goblin, or in this case, be a little be a little vulture. But yeah, C tier. You're not always going to get that extra loot because you might not even find the bodies. They might be burned out when you get there. C tier as a result. Really good trait. Love what it does, but the usage of it is, yeah, interesting. And also depends on the game that you queue in. And finally, Whispersmith. Um, being able to make less noise or no noise, really. It's really, is, it is no, there is noise, but it's so silent you won't hear it. Being able to make no noise effectively when you change weapons, really, really good. But it also is only really, really good depending how you fight. Now, if you're someone who's running into close to your opponent all the time, yeah, Whisper Myth is going to be great. People aren't going to hear you. But if you're someone who doesn't really get a chance to get in there, yeah, it's it's difficult. And we've got to remember, all these perks is objective. Like, Magpie is only good if you're picking up things, right? <laughs> Silent Killer is only good if you're charging melee. You know, there's, there, you could say that to all these traits. But how most people play the game. Whismith, very good trait. It's going to go down the bottom of B tier. Used to be uh, probably a lot higher, and that might, might, might have been because that's how I used to play. But nowadays, I'd probably put it at the bottom of B tier. So anyway, that's it. That's the trait list. Uh, updated on the 7th of the 4th, 2024. No doubt... Crytek will put more traits out, and I will continue to cry. I didn't do things like event traits, because they just... They don't stick around long enough uh, for that to impact the game to the point that a tier list is required. Uh, besides, we all know Peacekeeper is the best one, so you don't need to really go into that one. It's pretty much mandatory. Peacekeeper is the best. Anyway, that's it. That's the video. We'll see you in the next one.